I used to think that having faith meant having to choose between using your brain or just believing. When it came to God's existence and His nature, I thought that we had this choice to make between intelligence and blind hope. I was actually raised in a Christian home and in church, but this idea that had been contrived in my mind to just have faith actually eventually drove me to question God's existence. I thought, why should I simply believe God is real? I mean, my Sunday school teachers and my parents told me I just had to have faith, but I was never given any solid basis for belief. So during my college years, I stopped living the way I thought God wanted me to live. And I found myself in a miserably depressed and hopeless state. And because of this, I assumed that one of two things was happening. One, I was miserable because I was running from God and my choices were actually affecting me spiritually. Or two, that I was just miserable because I was so scared of letting my parents and myself down because of the standards I was raised with. But because of my hopeless state, I took a particular verse in the Bible and I sought to find out whether or not God was actually real. It was Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And so this is where the brain that God gave me came into play. You see, I looked at this verse and I thought, if God is actually real, and if the Bible is actually the Word of God, then when I do what this verse is telling me to do, something is going to happen. And I knew that if I actually sought God with all my heart and found Him, then I would know He was real. But if I truly seek God with all my heart and I don't find Him, then I'll be certain that He's not there. And the truth is, I actually really wanted to know what the answer was, no matter what it meant for my life. And so I started seeking God every day. And I didn't honestly even know what seeking God meant, but I put my whole heart into it and I did the best I could. I started reading the Bible and I started praying and I started asking God to do something, anything. I didn't know what. And another thing I started doing was I started waiting silently for Him. And I did these things every single day. And the whole time I did this, I felt like I could feel my faith growing. But I wasn't really sure. I mean, after all, what real evidence did I have? Except for my feelings, right? Eventually though, everything changed. And the moment that set my life on a completely different course suddenly happened. Because one night I was laying on the common room floor of my dorm suite, not caring what the other people going in and out thought of my actions, when suddenly I heard a gentle voice in my spirit. The Bible tells us that God is three in one. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As I lay there that night, I heard the unmistakable voice of the Holy Spirit. And he said some remarkable things. For years, I thought that if God were real and if he actually could talk to me, that he would list off all the terrible things I had done in my life. And that he would give me a list of good things I had to do in order to make up for all the bad. I thought that he would tell me that he was disappointed in me. But when I heard his voice for the first time, he told me two main things that I'll never forget. One, that he loved me. And that was something, even though I had heard it, I never truly believed it before. And two, that Jesus died on a cross and that He paid the penalty for my sin. I had grown up in church, hearing all about Christian stuff, but it took me finally having a real experience with God to just have faith and to believe that the gospel is actually true. And the gospel is really simple, by the way. Because God loved the world so much, He sent Jesus as a man to live a perfect life and then to be murdered on a cross and to take the punishment for our sins upon Himself. And then on the third day He rose again and now because of His sacrifice, we get to receive the forgiveness and grace of God by turning away from our sin and by believing in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And this doesn't mean that we're always perfect in our actions, just that we are continually relying on the sacrifice of Jesus and that we're allowing God to change our hearts 
and to make us look more like Christ. Accepting this truth is the greatest decision I've ever made. It changed my life. Better than that, it changed me. It changed my heart. And God has given me grace to live a different life now. And it's actually a whole lot more satisfying and peaceful than the life I used to live. And here's the thing, I can't say any of these things judgmentally. Because if I did, I would be judging myself. Because the truth is, I'm not a better person than anyone else. But I've experienced the very real grace of God. And my prayer is that you will experience it too. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means that to get to Him, faith is required. But it's not faith that's just based on a whim. God doesn't give us all the evidence, but He does give us some. He gives us enough. He lets us see the world that He created. He gives us knowledge of Himself in our hearts. And then He also gives us the testimony of others. And then He leaves us with a choice. God gave us a promise that if we would seek Him with our whole hearts, we would find Him. And then the choice we are left with is simply this. Are we going to use the small amount of faith it takes to see if He was telling the truth or not?